One of the mind's habits is to create states of becoming. This happens in the world outside and in your own inner world, the world of the mind. Where you start with a desire, and then based on that desire you take on an identity in a specific world of experience. If you have a desire for pizza, the you in that world is going to be both the you that is going to enjoy the pizza when you get it, and also the you that can get the pizza. You have the skills or you have the wherewithal to get it for yourself. That's the self as a producer, the one who's going to taste the pizza, that's the self as a consumer. And then as for the world, once you're focused on that desire, everything in the world that becomes relevant to that desire actually forms that particular becoming, or the world in that becoming. Whatever is either, either going to help you get the pizza or get in the way of getting the pizza, that's all in the foreground. Everything else falls in the background. And everything else in your own personal identity at that point that you could identify with falls in the background too. Then when you move on to another desire, there's another becoming with another you and a different world. The mind's doing this all the time. And then on the larger scale, there's the you here as a human being. And the world outside that you're inhabiting as a human being, that's also a kind of becoming. And one of the Buddha's main insights was that these two are connected. That the identity you have as a human being right now is based on a lot of the becomings you had in the past in your mind. And as the Buddha said, this process of becoming leads to, to suffering and entails suffering. Because that desire, when you cling to it, it's going to be uncertain. It's going to be unstable. And so anything built on that, anything that gathers around that will have to be unstable as well. This is why clinging lies at the essence of suffering. But it also turns out that you need to develop certain becomings in order to practice. The you who's here meditating, the inner world of your mind that you're inhabiting right now, where the breath should be important. And other things should fall in the background. That too is a kind of becoming. In fact, you actually see the process of becoming very clearly as you try to meditate, because all of a sudden you find yourself off in some other place, in a different world. And it's because a different desire took over, and a new you formed around that, and a new world formed around that, and took you off. So you keep trying to reestablish yourself, re yourself here. And not only as you're meditating, but also as you go through the world and trying to practice. The you as a meditator is something you want to encourage, that you want to nourish. The you that can do this. The Buddha encourages that kind of thinking. Other people can do this, why can't I? And also the, the memory that you embarked on this practice because you want to get past suffering. If you find yourself leaving this practice, then you have to ask yourself, well, don't you really love yourself? Don't you really care about yourself? So these are forms of selfing, or I-making and my-making in the Buddhist terms, that are actually helpful in the path. But there's also the process of world-making. What kind of world do you inhabit? Here at the monastery we have the context of the monastery, but when you leave, you've got to take a world with you. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha talks about the five strengths or the five faculties. These are qualities that nourish the mind and nourish the kind of becoming that you want as a practitioner. And the very first one starts out with conviction. Conviction, the Buddha's awakening, that he really was awakened. If you hold on to that conviction, it creates a different world around you. You see things through that lens. And they're going to look different from what they did if you looked in a world that didn't have anybody who'd ever awakened. 
What does it mean to have conviction in the Buddha's awakening? Well, it comes down to conviction in the principle of action, that your actions really do make a difference. And they can make a, such a huge difference that they can actually put an end to suffering. And you can do this on your own. After all, the Buddha did it on his own. And even though he said that the, the whole of the holy life is having admirable friends, the admirable friends are there simply to point out the way. And to give good advice, to set good examples. But the actual work is something you have to do. You have to do it on your own. This is the message of the Buddha's awakening. And you notice, if you look through Buddhist history, that when people try to change the Dharma, especially in forms that say, well, you can't do this on your own, you need some outside power to come and help you, they would also change the story of the Buddha's awakening. There's one where as the Buddha is sitting under the tree, or the Bodhisattva is sitting under the tree, he doesn't gain awakening there in their version. He gets spirited up to the pure abodes, and then he gets surrounded by Buddhas of the past, and they beam awakening into his head. Then he comes back down. In other words, he didn't do it on his own in their version. There's another version where he actually was having tantric sex in the palace, and that's how he gained awakening, and then he went out and sat under the tree as a show for people who might be inspired by that kind of thing. But you see how important that story of the Buddha's awakening is in creating the world in which you practice. Recently I was reading a secular Buddhist version of the Buddha, Buddha's life, and there actually was no awakening in that. The Buddha was just a well-meaning guy who thought about things a lot and was very sensitive, and finally decided that each of us has to be true to ourselves and find a path for ourselves. Nobody else can tell us what the path was. But unfortunately, he was not a good teacher, and the monks took his teachings and distorted them. But what kind of world would that be if nobody ever really gained awakening? It would be a pretty hopeless world. Or if you really are serious in putting an end to suffering, the story of the Buddha's awakening creates a new world around you. You see your life as an opportunity to develop the qualities that he developed. In the canon, they talk about being ardent, resolute, and heedful. And when you believe that the Buddha really did gain awakening through these qualities, it helps give you encouragement to develop those qualities in your life as well. Ardent to give rise to what's good in any circumstance. Resolute means that you're not going to be swayed by other people's opinions. This is especially important as we live here in this land of wrong view, where truth gets turned into truthiness, and the virtues are called into question, and everybody says, well, just go for the immediate hit. And they accuse Buddhism of being pessimistic. The Buddha is actually saying, look, through your efforts you can gain true happiness. You can put an end to all suffering. And human beings can do this. That's the other message. It's something that each of us can do on our own. It is possible for us to touch a deathless dimension within the mind, and the path can take us there. Sometimes you hear it questioned, what, how can a human being, which is a conditioned being, know something unconditioned? That wasn't the Buddha's approach. The Buddha's approach was, what can a human being know? And then after that, then you define what a human being is. And then you found actually that by defining yourself in any way is going to place limitations on yourself. But if you focus on developing a sense of yourself that is capable, that can take responsibility for your actions, that can learn from mistakes, simple things like that, but involves a quality of integrity, that kind of self can actually take you to the point where you don't need it anymore. Because after all, why do we create this sense of self in our becoming? It's because we want happiness based on our desires. But when you get to a point where there's a happiness that doesn't require any conditions, you don't have to create any sense of self around it. That's why the Buddha gave the teaching on that self. But to get to that point, you have to learn how to create a good self, a skillful sense of self, and at the same time have a sense 
<coughs> skillful sense of the world around you, a world in which awakening is possible. Now, this is a matter of conviction, but it's not the kind of faith where you're being asked to believe anything unreasonable. It's a working hypothesis. which helps get you on the path and keeps you on the path, and leaves open the possibility of awakening. Because if you take that other working hypothesis that nobody ever has really gained awakening, that it's all just a bunch of made-up stuff, that closes all the doors. So you have to decide which kind of person do you want to be, which kind of world do you want to live in. You do have that much of a choice. You can create an environment for your practice in this way based on your conviction. They find you'll be living in a world that's different from the people around you. But we're already living in a world different from the people around us. The question is, do you want to follow their worlds with their limited possibilities, or do you want to have the world of the Buddha, in which the possibilities are open and you're capable? The choice is yours. And since we're already creating worlds of becoming and selves of becoming over and over again, and suffering from that, why not create a becoming that leaves the potential open to get beyond becoming? It gives a new meaning to yourselfing, and it gives a new meaning to the worlding that you do. That leaves open the possibility that there are other dimensions in the mind aside from the little worlds that we keep creating for ourselves. It's a dimension that's unfabricated, or a dimension that is ultimate happiness, ultimate truth, ultimate freedom. Conviction in Buddha's awakening is something that leaves that dimension a possibility. A world without that awakening closes that possibility off. So remember that you're making the choice all the time. What kind of world are you going to be in? And what kind of person are you going to be in that world? Don't let other people make that choice for you. Listen to the part of your heart that says, I want happiness. I want to do it in a way that's wise, harmless. And you find that conviction in the Buddha's awakening helps you with that desire. 